Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today, I'd like to make a bit of a palette cleanser after my last video. Something simple, something light, something fun. Instead of making one big, in-depth video about one or two games, I wanted to make a quick run-through of a bunch of games that I personally recommend. We're in a bit of a gaming drought right now due to reasons you can probably understand, so why not take this time and go back to some games you may have overlooked or completely missed. I've got a mix of some big boys, some indie gems, old and new, hopefully some of these at the very least make you go, oh yeah, that game. Welcome to Input 1. Thanks for tuning in. Here's just a big list of recommendations. And that's about as complicated as it gets. Titanfall 2. Starting off on the right foot here, Titanfall 2 is, simply put, absolute FPS bliss. Made using a modified version of Valve's Source Engine, it's very natural to feel like you're playing a modern version of Half-Life 2 during certain moments during this game's campaign. There's something about the atmosphere, the visuals, the tone, and the raw creativity in this game that evokes the same feelings I got from Valve's flagship franchise. There's an understated charm in Titanfall 2, but it's not just due to its legendary kinship. It's also due to the great banter between the player character and BT, your Titan. I would accompany you, but unfortunately my chassis will not fit through the door. Oh, lucky you. I detect sarcasm. It's due to the exhilarating locomotion and airtight gunplay. It's due to ingenuity in its level design and, again, that raw creativity I mentioned before. I wish the multiplayer was more populated than it is today because the excitement from the campaign is multiplied exponentially when you take that action online. Intense mech battles and complex yet natural map design give you the tools and power to create your own inventive ways to outsmart or outgun other players in a satisfying way unique to Titanfall. Even though there's a lot of Titanfall 2 that's iterative of its predecessors, it still stands on its own, head and shoulders above its competition. That recommendation was a bit longer than I intended, so let's just blast through a few of these. Hades. I'm not really big into roguelikes, but Hades knows the frustrations many have with dying over and over and over again, and makes sure you have a steady incline of progress to keep you coming back for more and more, if the satisfying combat and intriguing narrative wasn't doing that already. Donut County. It's fun, it's cute, play it. After Party. And so I want you to understand that I'm not blaming you for getting us killed and sent to hell. From the same team that gave us the excellent Oxenfree, After Party is a fun look at the afterlife that also offers some thoughtful, introspective insights into its main characters, drinking culture, and the big man of hell himself. It's easy to get through this in one or two sittings, so hopefully that makes it easier to check this one out. I really enjoyed it. Sayonara Wild Hearts. It's simple arcade rhythm action with one of the best original soundtracks in all of gaming, fused with vibrant and colorful visuals. It feels like every single second of this game was poured over and meticulously crafted, which is why it impressed me so much when I played it for the first time. Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Hold on. If you were disappointed by another RPG in a cyberpunk world, I definitely recommend Deus Ex. Mankind Divided is a bit disappointingly short, but the strength of its design, world, and decision making makes it an easy recommendation. Wild Arms. Often overshadowed by the other RPG that came out around the same time, Wild Arms is still very much worth trying. So much so, I actually made a video a while back talking about this game and why I like it. The music is great, the story is great, the gameplay is easy to understand and fun. Two thumbs up from me. Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night. It's pretty much a Symphony of the Night remake, and that's a beautiful thing. It's not even trying to not be. I mean, both games were made in part due to the same guy, Koji Igarashi. There's not much to say here. Bloodstained is exactly what you think it is, and it's great. The Red Strings Club. Weirdly, not the only cyberpunk bartending game out there. So if you liked Valhalla and want more, check this out. It's got a unique twist on both the bartending and the overarching story. So check it out and spread the word. Void Bastards. A unique take on roguelikes that has you, the player, exploring procedurally generated ships and slowly but surely building your crew and armory with the materials and items you accrue from each run. It's fun, satisfying, and not much else, but sometimes that's all you need. 
Need for Speed Heat. Ghost Games had a shaky track record, pun intended, when it came to Need for Speed after they took control with Rivals. They struggled to find the image and identity of their Need for Speed. They came close with Need for Speed 2015, but it just wasn't quite there. I feel that Heat was finally the result of all their growing pains and struggles, resulting in an excellently crafted open world racing game experience that can go toe to toe even with the great classics of the Need for Speed franchise. Heat shows great reverence to its past, while also forming its own unique image through the intense stakes Ghost Games has added to the police chases. Heat was the game that made me realize Ghost Games finally understands Need for Speed on a fundamental level, and it's a shame they were not only not rewarded for it, but that the studio has been dissolved and the keys to the franchise handed over to Criterion Games. I would have loved to have seen them take the experience from Heat and apply it to a new project, so we'll just have to love what we have. If you miss the way Need for Speed used to be and wish there was a modern take on classics like Underground 2 and Most Wanted, well, this is for you. A Way Out Joseph Fares wasn't bluffing when he said there wasn't anything else like this game. I know I sound very cocky, but I can't help it because it's true. I've never played a game that was so confident in itself and its own unique vision, enough to constantly shift genres and present situations that dramatically change the way you think the game works. Fares and his team at Hazelight have since taken their experience with this game and have iterated on it with It Takes Two, but A Way Out will always be the genesis of Hazelight's brave and bold creative stance in the co-op space. Final Fantasy IX. I know this game has its fans who swear by it, and there's the fact that it's part of one of the biggest franchises in gaming, but I still can't help but feel that Final Fantasy IX is a bit overlooked in the grand scheme of things. I loved its charming world, quirky characters, and beautiful story, but honestly, the thing that surprised me most was its RPG mechanics. I loved the idea that certain abilities are tied to certain items, and once you master that ability, you can use it no matter what you have equipped. It's an idea so good, it even made its way into Final Fantasy VII Remake almost exactly 20 years later. So if you missed this one or never cared because it's not 6 or 7, you're seriously missing out. I loved it. Control. Incredible world, incredible gameplay, I'd expect nothing less from Remedy, but Control truly separates itself by just how damn good it feels. The title Control isn't just a nod to the game's Federal Bureau of Control, it's one of the prevalent themes in the game's narrative and the main character's personal story, as well as a statement that you, the player, are in complete control. It's a powerful feeling, and that's the whole point. This game is a modern masterpiece, in my opinion. Destiny 2. This game has had its ups and downs, but ever since Bungie separated themselves and Destiny from Activision, it feels like they're finally realizing their initial vision for Destiny, an ever-changing world featuring events that have lore and in-game ramifications. It's a shame it had to suffer so many growing pains to get to where it's at, but I think it's in a really good place, especially following the substantial Beyond Light expansion. It's a place worth checking out, at least. The Evil Within. Resident Evil Mania is in full swing all over again, but let's not forget one of the fleeting bastions of survival horror after Resident Evil went off the deep end in 2012. The Evil Within was essentially the replacement to Resident Evil when it came out in 2014, even helmed by Shinji Mikami, the man who created Resident Evil to begin with. It's pure survival horror, and even though neither game is perfect, they're both excellent examples of what this genre can be. This is kind of a two-in-one recommendation containing both The Evil Within and it's more open-ended sequel. If you're loving the new era of Resident Evil we're in and want even more survival horror goodness, check these games out. Fuser. Fuser has been one of the hardest games in the industry to cover. Due to its inherent reliance on licensed music, it's difficult to properly showcase just how cool this game is without getting a DMCA strike from YouTube or Twitch. The same way Harmonix recreated the feeling of performing live music on a variety of instruments with Guitar Hero and Rock Band, they've essentially done it all over again, but instead with DJing in Fuser. Not only does Fuser give you the opportunity to find out for yourself what All Star sounds like when mashed up with Sandstorm, take on me and never gonna give you up.
It also gives you the opportunity to make your own music using dozens of licensed songs and the large variety of midis and drum pads the game gives you. If you've ever wanted to live out your fantasies of being Diplo or Marc Rubier, Fuser is here for that. Like I said, it's not just a fun game, it's also a great music creation tool. Neo. A lot of people compare Neo and its sequel to Dark Souls or more specifically Sekiro, but honestly the similarities might most resemble Ninja Gaiden. The rapid, reflex-based gameplay and dozens and dozens of combos with each weapon make Neo feel like a traditional action game, but with the raised stakes you can only get from a Souls-like game. It's a beautiful fusion that, in my opinion, occasionally ascends beyond its inspirations, especially when it comes to difficulty. All right, how about one more? How about Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2? I know I already have a Need for Speed game on this list, but I also have to give a huge nod to an old school Need for Speed classic among old school Need for Speed classics. This would have been an easy place to recommend the reboot of Hot Pursuit and its recent remaster, but instead I've opted for one of the two games that inspired that reboot. And when you look at this game today, it's easy to see how it inspired its future follow-up. The endless shortcuts that intertwine with each other, the fun set pieces within each course, and the never-ending amount of butt-clenching moments are at their best in Hot Pursuit 2. Almost to the point where you could play this game after the reboot and the 2 in this game's title would still make sense. Hot Pursuit 2 is all about the simple pleasures, the inertia from the speed, the unapologetically early 2000s soundtrack, and the fact that there's literally a button mapped to creating a giant flame trail ahead of your car to see incoming obstacles obstacles, and another one to make the camera do a slow motion rotation around your car. This is a Need for Speed game that time forgot, caught in that awkward time between the old old school era and the underground most wanted era, but it's definitely one worth remembering, and absolutely one worth respecting, and one worth playing of course. And those have just been a few of my off the wall or major recommendations. These aren't all games I'd throw on my top 100 list or anything, but I still vouch for every single game featured in this video. Just nice little suggestions if you're struggling to find something to play right now. Hopefully some of these pique your curiosity or remind you of some good times you've had with one or even all of these games. I know I kind of just set a precedent for each upload to be some deep, introspective look at certain games or topics, but I honestly just wanted to do something light and fun after my last big video. I love sharing the things I love. This video doesn't have any gimmick or deep message, it's just a big list of recommendations that I hope can get you through some tough times, or just raw boredom. Thanks for watching! If you want to support me, a link to my Patreon is in the description, alongside a link to my Twitter account if you want to follow me there. This has been Input 1. Stay tuned.